What is vintage? Is an old iPhone 3G tucked in the back of your desk drawer vintage? What about that half-eaten burger from two months ago rotting away in the back of your fridge? Well, an article on RetroKids.com claims that an item should be at least 20 years old to be considered vintage. Huh. I guess that makes me vintage. Anyways, this channel focuses heavily on vintage computing, but today we're going to take a look at a computer that, while not yet vintage, Apple still considers to be obsolete. And we're going to make it great again. So here we have a 27-inch, late 2009 iMac sporting an Intel Core i7 2.8 GHz quad-core CPU, ATI Radeon HD 4850 graphics, 4GB RAM, and a terabyte of spinning rust. This system is currently running OS 10.9 Mavericks, but officially supports up to 10.12 High Sierra. This 27-inch iMac will be replacing an early 2008 24-inch iMac, which was fully maxed out at time of purchase, with an Intel Core 2 Duo 3.06 GHz CPU, NVIDIA GeForce 8800GS graphics, 2GB of RAM, and 750GB hard drive. Since new, I've replaced a faulty GPU on that system, cleaned out the dust, upgraded the RAM to 4GB, upgraded to an SSD, and added a 1TB external USB 2.0 drive. That's it, and it's been a light duty daily use machine from March 2008 until now, December 2021. So let's refurbish and upgrade this 27 inch iMac to the max. See what I did there? Oh, and the only way to make these bad puns better is to like, subscribe, and share this video. Okay, first things first. Peripherals. I have a working Apple wired keyboard, full size with numpad, which the cord was cut. I also have a replacement cord scavenged from a destroyed keyboard. If you haven't looked closely before, you may not notice that these Apple keyboards are completely non-serviceable. There are no screws or clips, just bond for life adhesive that guarantees you're going to destroy the keyboard if you ever try to separate it. With the help of a rotary Dremel, an access hatch was made to surgically exchange the USB cable using the donor keyboard to estimate solder locations. To be honest, this probably wasn't worthwhile, but I was just curious if it was possible to revive it. While this 27-inch iMac is only just over a year newer than the 24-inch, it brings a lot of important improvements, the biggest being quad-core CPU support and support for up to 32 gigabytes of RAM. The goal for this project is to upgrade to the latest OS 12 Monterey via Open Core Legacy Patcher, upgrade to the maximum 32 gigabytes of RAM, and install an SSD in the CD drive bay, because CDs are so 2009. I started with a USB stick with macOS 12 Monterey installer on it. Creating this stick was a fairly straightforward process, and there are many guides online which show you how to do it. The install USB has to then be patched with Open Core Legacy Patcher. This patch installs a UAFI bootloader which facilitates booting the unsupported OS or installer. One really handy thing about Macs is the ability to boot your OS off an external hard drive. Because I'm installing an OS which is not officially supported, I thought it'd be best to get everything tested and confirmed working before I open the Mac to install the SSD. OS installation works exactly as usual. Partition the disk, then install. One issue I had with the installer was that it hung at less than a minute remaining for at least 30 minutes. It did figure itself out eventually, though. After the OS is installed, I run the Open Legacy Patcher again, and install the bootloader to the SSD, so the SSD can now boot directly. And lastly, install post-installation patches. One of the reasons these OSs become unsupported on older hardware is because Apple drops driver support. In some cases, this may legitimately be due to a change in the new OS which makes the old drivers incompatible. However, in many cases, drivers can be brought over from previous versions of macOS with little or no modification. Other drivers, such as the Radeon HD 4000 series graphics in my case, require heavier patching to trick the OS into supporting basic non-metal acceleration. For this iMac, the patcher also brings back Wi-Fi support, which is broken by Apple. Wow, I was so excited at this point. The latest OS 12 Monterey working and hardly any effort. 
That's when I apparently forgot to knock on wood. As soon as I tested sleep mode, a feature which this particular iMac will use regularly and absolutely needs, I realized the graphics will go completely bonkers until you reboot. Every project needs a hiccup, doesn't it? Through many hours of testing and tinkering, I discovered that the flurry screensaver with settings cranked would recover the screen within seconds, presumably causing the entire frame buffer to get rewritten. Great! Tweak screensaver settings and set hot corners for quick access. Perfect! Now install the SSD. Unfortunately, the CD adapter I had was a slim model, not the full-size one the iMac uses. I tried butchering up the adapter, but still no go. So I mounted the SSD directly to the bracket and sealed off the airway with some foil tape. Oh, and pop some more RAM in while we're at it. I had some spare 8 gigabyte sticks of DDR3 kicking around, so we're going to upgrade to 32 gigs of RAM, the maximum supported by the chipset. And boot up is perfect! The very last cherry on the cake is to adjust the fan profiles with max fan control. Apple likes their Macs to run hot and quiet, but they also like you to buy a new one every couple years. Tuning these settings will hopefully let it last until it's truly obsolete and prevent the somewhat common GPU failure from occurring. I hope you liked this video. It would really help if you liked, subscribed, and shared this video. Also, hit the bell icon to be notified of upcoming videos. The next upcoming video gets back into proper retro hardware, featuring some retro games on a retro Pentium 3 laptop. Until next time!